But what if we set up a system that prevents brake rotors from reaching temperatures at which they're going to warp? How much? Well, I'll be. Simply put, let's try making us a set of water-cooled brakes. Let's get to it. Hey there, fellows. So overheated brakes are a fairly common issue. You hit a puddle, they get warped. But what if we set up a system that prevents brake rotors from reaching temperatures at which they're going to warp? Simply put, let's try making us a set of water-cooled brakes. Let's get to it. We use water to cool brake rotors. What'll happen? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. All right, so check this out, guys. This is rather interesting. The rotors are only going to get doused with water if they were to get really hot. Now, one could argue that you shouldn't allow your brakes to get that hot in the first place, but that's not always how it goes. Anyway, so we came up with a fairly simple design. We took a few regular old windshield washer jets of the type that spray fog and not a stream. And allow me to demonstrate. Switch it on. When the brake pedal is pressed, that activates the pump. This sprays water and the water cools down the brake rotor, preventing it from overheating. Okay, so hopefully our system works absolutely beautifully. And in the event something were to go wrong, like if the water were to evaporate too rapidly, we can always replace the water with some other type of liquid. To figure out with what exactly and to see how this works, we need to make our way over to the test track. Right, let's get everything ready and go try the system out. Alright, we're at the test track. Everything is in place, we've installed the system, it's all looking good. Let's start by trying out the unmodified brakes. 57, 60... Terrific. 94. 94. Alright, so from that sort of speed, a car is going to come to a stop very effectively. The brake temperature only got up to about 95 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature of the rotors, I mean. And that's about where it should be. And so now, the switch to turn the cooling on is located over here. We've attached the button. Let me just flip this on. And so now each time I go for the brakes, that is going to trigger the water sprayers. Now I'm going to evaluate the braking performance given that a tiny amount of water is being sprayed onto the rotor in the spot right after the brake pads. There's water in the tank and water is where we're starting. 60. 60. Oh, holy cow! Isn't that something? I saw 84. You saw 84? Uh-huh. I think we should try that again. 60. Oh, we're a bit further. I let off the brakes to stop the spring. I just saw 111. How much? 111. That wasn't a great result, but I forgot to press the button. I stopped a bit further even compared to the first time, and all because the water jets weren't working. And the rotors got up to 111 degrees. I mean, water boils at lower temperature. They have no business getting this hot. But now the system is on, and we have to wait for the brakes to cool down. I guess now we wait. Okay, everything is good, the brakes have cooled down. Now I'm gonna drive to the starting point, to then accelerate. This time I've got the system on. Now I'm gonna do some hard braking while the sprayers are going to pour plenty of water onto the rotors. 60. Wow, that is some impressive braking! And keep in mind to release the brakes to prevent the jets from spraying. How much? 74. 74. Holy cow. When I forgot to switch the system on, 
I rolled even further than I did the first time around. And both of the times when the sprayers were actually working... Spot on? I'd say that's bang on. And one thing I find quite curious... It would seem as if... The brakes are performing quite a bit more effectively. Can't really tell you why. But that was us using water, which I suggest we replace with a certain something. So right here I've got me a canister full of anti-static cleaner. It is water-based, but there's also some alcohol in there. Alcohol, as we know, is a good degreaser. It's good at removing all sorts of dirt. And of course, since this is water-based, it also quite obviously contains water. And so let's see what happens when we pour some of this in instead of water. Let's go. Sixty. I have to let off the pedal immediately to stop the jets from working, as that won't allow us to get a correct temperature reading. That's 65. 65? That's not high at all. So look here, brake rotor temperature has decreased. It's only at 65 degrees. But let's go check on the stopping distance. And it appears that the stopping distance has increased. So the compound evaporates at a higher rate, and that fine film between the pads and the rotor, it doesn't allow them to make proper contact, even though the temperature isn't all that high. Now, since we've already tried an alcohol-based cleaning agent, why not try using pure alcohol? It's not the safest thing. Given that alcohol, just like gasoline, ignites pretty easily. Hopefully nothing like that happens in our case. And so let's go ahead and try filling that reservoir of ours with pure alcohol. Now even though we don't have that much of it, I still think we'd better check and see how, I don't know, pure it is, I guess. Let's see. Okay, it burns. Apparently you're not supposed to see it, but here you certainly can. Okay, pour it into the reservoir and let's see how it do. We've poured in the alcohol. That is 60. How much? 46? Did all of it evaporate? That was fast. And the temperature is 46 degrees? I mean, holy cow. Did you guys hear that? Though I'm not satisfied with the stopping distance. As you can plainly see whether using alcohol or an alcohol-based cleaning compound, we're about one car length further. But we'd better try one more time just to confirm. Overcooked it there and now keep it at 60, come on. What do we got? Did you say 54 or 64? 54. Holy cow. All right, 54 degrees. So it's got way better cooling properties. I mean, temperatures aren't even getting up to 60 degrees, which is quite nice. However, despite the cooling effect, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. You see, we're exactly where we were last time. Stopped in the same place. Well, what can I even say? Even though the alcohol does a great job cooling the rotors, it doesn't allow the car to stop all that well. I suggest we try something else, something you would use in a car. And the obvious thing that is first to come to mind is a windshield washer fluid. Careful not to kill me! So this is good all the way down to minus 30 degrees. And during the springtime, this stuff is actually fairly difficult to come by. Anyway, let's go ahead and pour the windshield washer fluid in and see what that does for us. Right, we filled the system, purged it. And let's see what happens. Oi, 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 oi. 
Don't forget to release to stop the spring. 59. All right, so the temperature has risen compared to all of the alcoholic compounds. It's not quite as quick to evaporate and take the heat with it as it does so. As for the stopping distance, it's quite a bit better, actually. The car has come to a stop earlier than on alcohol and the alcohol-based cleaning compound. That said, stopping distance is worse than on regular brakes. Something is getting in the way. Perhaps the compound contains certain components that rapidly evaporate, which results in the formation of a layer of gas. Or maybe it contains something that, when the fluid is used as intended, serves as lubrication to prevent the windshield from getting scratched and so on. I mean, it does do a good job cleaning. As for the end result, it's noticeably worse than on dry brakes or when using regular old water. But we also brought some coolant with us. We really want to try it out. But we are well aware that coolant contains certain additives that prevent rubber seals from going, the radiator cap, cooling hoses and so on. The point is that for the purpose of keeping all of that lubricated, the coolant contains something. The question is whether that something is going to get in the way or on the contrary, I mean, this is coolant we're talking about, right? Maybe it'll serve its purpose as it should, without compromising stopping power. Let's pour it in and find out, shall we? Yeah, it is definitely not suited to cooling your brake rotors. 51, okay. So look here. The rotors haven't even gotten up to all that high of a temperature. But the stopping distance is atrocious. It's as if the brakes have faded. I mean, look at how much further it rolled. From the cone marking the factory stopping distance and to here, you got four car lengths, like 20 meters. Anyway, so this was to be expected from the antifreeze because of its chemical composition. We were surprised by the water, the rest you saw for yourselves. Those are the results, you can be the judges, and that's it for this video, catch you guys later. Mm-hmm.